On a sunny summer day at one of the most beautiful creeks I've ever laid eyes on, I've set a challenge for myself. For the entire day, I'll use only one simple rod. A tenkara rod with no reel. And alongside that, a handful of traditional Japanese wet flies called kabari. My goal is to fool the wily, wild brown trout that swim these crystal clear, spring-fed waters. If I'm ever to succeed in this goal, I'll need to focus on stealth, casting accuracy, and presentation above all else. So let's get casting, and let's see just what we can pull off today. First hole and first cast here on my minimalist Tenkara challenge using nothing but the Tenkara Rodco and Topo Designs collaboration rod and kit. So this kit includes a new Tenkara rod, very, very similar to the uh, Tenkara Rodco Sierra. Uh, comes in a tiny little wallet, includes some 5X tippet, a few Kabari, and a furled line. We're gonna be using nothing but that today. We're gonna to roll with the punches. We're gonna see how well we can do and uh, see if we can catch some fish in this absolutely stunning, really, really crystal clear Spring Creek today. Man, they are spooky as heck. I've spooked every fish in this hole. There's there's probably a couple dozen just kind of darting all around around me. It's good and bad news. It's going to be tough today. Should be a fun little challenge, making do with what minimal gear we have. Uh, stealth is going to be absolutely paramount. I've blown this hole up. I'm going to keep moving on up. I think if I can kind of get into some of these ledges up here, places where I can make some casts without stepping in the pool, without being seen, uh, without standing above the water. That's gonna give me my best chance for success. Uh, but this is gonna be really fun today and I'm really looking forward to it. Ooh, there was a hit, there was a hit, right off the bat. And now they're spooked. <laughs> you know, this furled line is nice and easy to see, but I do think it's scaring some of these fish a little bit. <sighs> Hung up. All right, let me retrieve this fly. We're gonna keep moving up. I've only got a, a few flies. I cannot be losing these things. You got a bite though, that's a good sign. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Extremely tight casting in here. Really, really tough. Snuck it just under that bush on the left side of the bank there. It's a nice, big, slow eddy. Let's keep the pressure on this guy. Oh, the trees are making it hard. Yeah, come on down here to me, bud. There we go. Good boy. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful brown trout. You know, I'm uh, pretty proud of myself for catching that fish. There's some extremely tight casting quarters here. Um, really, really tough stuff here. I gotta be cherry picking these holes, finding ones where I can actually make a back cast. There was a bite right there. Uh, cherry picking the holes though, finding ones that are slightly more open. You can see up here, you know, there's some that are just like completely choked out. But um, one fish already had a few bites. 
This place is absolutely stunning, and uh, I'm really enjoying the, the kind of minimal nature and the simplicity of uh, fishing with this setup today. A lot of fun. And I will say this, uh, this rod and line combo casts like a dream. Really nice. Um, I'm kind of a level line fanatic. I really don't mess with furled lines all that much. And uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that I'm forcing myself to today because I think I might actually utilize them a bit more in the future. I like kind of the slow and steady cast. It's very predictable, and um, it definitely cuts through wind a little bit better. I can see that it's not super windy right now, but um, you can definitely tell it's going to be a lot better than just straight fluorocarbon level line. Now, when I'm casting into the water and uh, trying to keep my rod tip up, keeping only my tippet in the water. It's, uh, it's a little more saggy. Um, it droops down a little bit more than level line, which makes sense because it's heavier, of course. And um, I think that definitely spooks the fish a bit more. Um, so like I said, pros and cons. But um, for now, we're catching some fish and I'm really enjoying how it's casting. Nice fish. I had one shot there. One shot. And he came up and ate it right away. All right, we're good. Gorgeous fish. Heck yeah. My God, look at this place. Hands down, one of the prettiest creeks I've ever fished. These cliffs just sinking right into this beautiful crystal clear spring creek oh my goodness wild brown trout they're all absolutely beautiful so far this is special this is really special One thing that's working really well uh, that I'm finding out is uh, kind of roll casting. So just kind of letting that, I basically, I, I, I kind of pulled fly out of the water, bring it back towards me so it's dangling right here. There's enough weight in this furled line that I can kind of just pop it out like that. Then I don't have to worry about the trees up above, my back cast as much, and uh, that's really helping me not get tangled up in these tight quarters. Okay, slowly moving up here. This is a really, really good looking hole um, right up here. Looks pretty deep. I'd be really surprised if there isn't a trout hanging out in here. We just gotta keep being stealthy, move up slowly, and uh, try to present this fly without the trout seeing us first. Here we go. Nothing there. All right, we're gonna make a cast right to the middle here. I know there's a fish in here. I feel good about this. I think we're gonna find one. Dang, <laughs> there was one hiding up, up to the left there. Spooked out immediately when the line hit. Like I said, pros and cons to this brightly colored furled line. Cast great, but um, definitely has a tendency to spook some fish, especially in real skinny scenarios like this. This is as, this is as stealthy as it gets though. You know, this is the hardest casting, clearest water out of 
pretty much anywhere anywhere that you're gonna fish. So if it's gonna spook fish anywhere, it's here. But you can't help but wonder if a little level line might uh, might work a little bit better. Just had a bite there. Fish just came up for it. He outright missed it. Not coming back. Try a couple more casts here. Come on, buddy. You know, nothing gets me more excited than uh, to pull a fish out of a hole like this in just like such a cool scenic location. It really gets my blood pumping. Oh, oh, come on. He flashed on it again. Looks to be a small brown. Here we go, here we go, come on. Trying to get it as close as I can up under this rock here. I'm surprised he hit a couple times. That has not been a common scenario today. Pretty much kind of like one chance and then it's over with. But uh, this guy hit twice. I don't think, uh, not a real commitment though. And I'm hung up. Oh man. <laughs> All right, let's retrieve this line. Keep moving up. Oh, oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, <laughs> oh man, nice big brown. He came up so slowly on it. I saw his mouth go, set the hook, but uh, it was just a quick bite. Did not connect. This pool looks so good, but uh, sometimes these big pools, they can be tough. Hard to present a fly sometimes, especially with these unweighted Kabari. They're kind of just floating around. I feel like if I uh, put a put a nymph on right now, I could kind of dredge the depths and I, I bet I'd find a fish that way. Honestly, I do. But that's not the challenge, is it? Oh, oh, had a rise there. And the looker. There we go. There we freaking go. Nice fish. Oh my gosh. He feels awesome on this rod. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh my gosh, yes. Man, I am happy. Moving fast and light with minimal gear and uh, fooling wary browns. It's as good as it gets. And on top of that, the scenery is just ridiculous. So beautiful here. Spring fed, crystal clear. Epic day. All right, we've got a pod of fish feeding pretty heavily on the surface right in front of us within casting range. I'm gonna try to lay down a cast, try to make it tip it only. They're eating kind of off the surface and uh, slightly below, maybe a mergers. There's a really nice one right at the tail, right here. Gotta make sure I don't royally F it up and uh, hit this tree. Oh man, here we go, here we go. Oh, okay, mixed bag there. The big one in the rears, he spooked off, had another one follow. Man, tricky fish. We still have a chance. In a small creek like this, <laughs> these trout should not be inspecting the fly, they should be eating it. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah. Nice one here. Gosh, how cool is that? How cool is that? <laughs> They've all been so pretty too. All
To talk a bit more about this rod, you know, it, it is essentially just a reskinned Tenkara Rodco Sierra. So it's pretty much just got a new color pattern. And um, this rod is, is really, a, really a beauty. Olive kind of forest colored green, a little bit bronzy almost. And then there's like these like striking sky blue little sections uh, at the joints. And it really looks quite nice. I would say it's my preferred Sierra color. <laughs> it's really a good looking rod. If you're interested at all, uh, you can find this whole kit, the Topo Designs Tenkara Rodco collaboration, available on their website right now on Tenkara Rodco. Um, this is a cool little kit, and uh, it's not a bad way at all to get started in Tenkara fishing. Uh, this rod has a really nice supple action. The furled line is easy to cast, and the flies, they get the job done. I do have a coupon code. Code is Flicky Flies. You'll get 15% uh, off your entire order, whether it's this nice little kit here or uh, anything else at all from Tenkara Rodco's website. Uh, I get a little kickback, make a little money, put it in my gas tank, keep me out here uh, making these videos for you guys. So thanks for the consideration, thanks in advance. Um, but I am genuinely having a heck of a good time out here with this kit today. <laughs> Look at this. It is like, it's like paradise. This is ridiculous. Look at these cliffs. Man, just, just honestly a stunning creek. I knew we were going to get into a little bit of this kind of cliffside stuff from uh, some of my research and satellite maps, but um, it's been like over 50% of the time in these really pretty cliffside creaky sections. It's been a real joy to fish here today. It has been a little while since I've held the trout, over an hour at least. I'm spooking all the fish in this hole as well. It's just too skinny here. It's got to be just right in order for me to connect. This line plops down. I mean, even if I'm getting a fly first kind of presentation and only having a little bit of the furled line on the surface, these fish are so wary. They're, uh, they're just booking it out of there as soon as they see the fly splash down. Tough fishing. Absolutely rewarding though. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not getting tired of it yet. Each new hole presents a new opportunity and um, this kind of stealth fishing is um, really enjoyable. Keeps the mind engaged. If I mess up, it's all my fault. If I'm not catching any fish, it's up to me. So I just got to do better. There we go. This is going to be a tough one. He's under the log immediately. Let's see if I can pry him out here. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, no. There. Oh, yeah. We got him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're all spooked. All spooked. I swear, all it takes is one. Guy moved from back here, shot up that way, and I see three, four more <laughs> zipping around. <laughs> well, my friends, I think this will be the last hole for me here on this creek today. Incredible day, though. So much fun. I really enjoyed challenging myself and uh, trying something new fishing only kabaris with this particular kit, this particular setup, was a ton of fun. We really had to work for these trout, and um, that's okay. That was fun. It was fun to kind of flex our stealth muscles and uh, try our best to uh, capture these wary wild browns. Thanks so much for watching my video, guys. I'll catch you next time. If you'd like to watch me fish another spring-fed creek, Click the video above.